Hi everyone, this is Alinka. Thank you for joining me today. So November is almost here and I thought that we would do a quick forecast for the month of November and see what you can expect to happen in the next month. So first let's have a quick overview of November. So the biggest event of the month is happening on the 8th of November and that is the lunar eclipse which is happening at 15 degrees Taurus. Then on the 16th Venus will step into Sagittarius. On the 17th Mercury will step into Sagittarius. Then on the 22nd the Sun will step into Sagittarius and on the 23rd we have a new moon at the first degree of Sagittarius and on the same day we also have Jupiter turning direct at 28 degrees of Pisces. So in general the month of November is going to be very focused on Sagittarius so we're going to look at what this means for you and we're going to discuss this lunar eclipse which is a very important event. So before we go to the forecasts for the 12 signs, I just want to remind you to listen to the forecast from the sign of your ascendant because it is the most accurate. You can also check for your sun and your moon sign to get some extra information. And now let's go to the signs. For Aries, this lunar eclipse is affecting your second house of finances and values and self-esteem. So at this time you may feel like you want to become more financially independent or you may feel the need to change your values or change something about the way you, you see yourself but this may put some tension on your connection with other people because the 8th house rules other people and what we get from them. So you may be afraid to cut ties with those who have been helping you so far. That may be necessary in order for you to finally reach your independence, but it may be um, quite scary for you and Saturn is also squaring this eclipse from the 11th house and it is challenging these fears you have around your future and the independence you're gonna have in your future. You want it but you're afraid to break away from either other people's support, whatever support they've been offering you or or perhaps you want to break away from them but you're still unsure about what the future holds for you. You may also be afraid of other people's judgments of you because the 11th house does rule social circle and friends. Or you may just be afraid of standing out in the crowd in the crowd because this Saturn is uh, challenging you to go about your finances in your own way and you may be afraid that others will judge what you're doing or how you make your money or your new values or how you see yourself now. Jupiter and Neptune are putting a trine and a sextile to this axis. So they're helping you from the 12th house 
which is the house of the subconscious. It's more things that are happening in the background or things that are invisible. So there may be some invisible forces helping you make this transition. So if you want to feel more at peace and more hopeful about this change that is happening, perhaps it might help you to pray or meditate. Some spiritual practice might be very beneficial. Or you could perhaps retreat for a while because the 12th house does rule solitude and self-reflection. In the second half of the month, we are going to have several transits in Sagittarius, which are going to be affecting your ninth house, which is the Sagittarius house. And it rules education, personal beliefs, spiritual growth, wisdom. So there is going to be a lot of activity in this house. You may feel much more positive and optimistic, much more open to learning and exploring, much more willing to try new things, and you may be hungry for new experiences. You may be more intellectually curious because we have Mercury there, and because Venus is also stepping into Sagittarius, there's going to be a lot more enjoyment as well. So this is a good time to take risks and learn new things, to explore, to educate yourself. You may even travel somewhere far because the Ninth House rules foreign countries and cultures. And um, overall, it's a much more positive time. And then we have this new moon in Sagittarius, which is also affecting your ninth house. So there is a beneficial new start here. So you may feel like you, you want to start something new here. You want to try something new, go somewhere new. And your personal beliefs, your sense of hope and optimism could really increase or shift because after the heaviness of the eclipse, whatever change is happening there, you're gonna <clears throat> feel much more hopeful now. We also have Neptune and Jupiter putting a trine to this new moon, so they're bringing a very gentle and peaceful energy, so this is going to be a gentle transition into a new beginning. For Taurus, this lunar eclipse is affecting your first house, and your seventh house. So your first house rules you, your life path, your approach to life, and your physical body. So at this time, you may feel a greater need to focus on the matters of the first house and leave behind the matters of the seventh house. So the seventh house rules other people, it rules partnerships. So at this time, you may feel the need to become more personally independent, more free in some sense, more authentic in the way you live your life. But this may require you to cut ties with someone in your life perhaps a significant partner, and this could be either a personal partner or a professional partnership. And it may be quite scary for you, but it is what is required for you to reach this sense of personal freedom and autonomy. 
At the same time, we have a square to this um, lunar eclipse coming from Saturn in your 10th house, which is the house of career and life ambitions and reputation. So Saturn is challenging this eclipse, this change that is coming for you. And the challenge is centered around your fears when it comes to your public reputation. Perhaps you're afraid of being judged or, or um, perhaps you're afraid of standing out or going against what is socially acceptable. So for example, you may be trying to cut ties with a partner, perhaps a breakup of some kind or a divorce even. And you may be a little bit worried about your reputation or what the people with, will say, or even just where your future is leading you, because that is also a 10th house topic. So you may be unsure how you're going to handle things by yourself, but Jupiter and Neptune are helping this eclipse and they are positioned in your 11th house of friends and social circle so really there is no need to worry because your friends or the general public will provide support and be very understanding of your decision in the second half of the month, we have several planets moving into Sagittarius and this is going to be a very positive, light time, much easier than the first half of the month. So this is happening in your 8th house and you can expect to be more positive here more willing to explore and to have new experiences. And the 8th house rules other people's things. It rules changes. It also rules intimacy and sex. So if you had, if you had gone through a breakup, you may be more willing to put yourself out now and get involved with someone you may be more willing to experiment, to try things out. Just in general, you may become more trusting of other people and more accepting of any help or resources they may provide you. This may also be a good time to study some occult topics because the 8th house rules the occult and hidden things and Sagittarius is about exploration and learning and spirituality. So if you are feeling pulled towards things like astrology or tarot or anything else like that, you may really get into it. You may get into learning about like darker topics. The eighth house rules, you know, crime and death and mysteries and conspiracies so you may be more more willing to explore these topics but overall it's a very positive time and we also have the new moon happening at the first degree of Sagittarius in this house so this is gonna bring a very beneficial new start in this house in some way and this new start is also being helped by Neptune and Jupiter, so which are in your 11th house. So you could receive some help from your friends or acquaintances or just the general public. And it's going to be, in general, a very peaceful and hopeful time. So whatever transition you're making, it may be a little scary at first, but it's going to be quite gentle after that. And it's going to be a nice new beginning after all the um, 
turbulence of the eclipse. On the same day as the new moon, on the 23rd, we also have Jupiter turning direct at 28 degrees Pisces. And this Jupiter has been in retrograde, retrograde motion since the end of July. So if you have been feeling a little lost or hopeless when it comes to your future, your hopes and your dreams for the future, you may now feel a restored sense of belief in the universe. You may feel more hopeful and positive. And you could see some blessings and some good karma come back to you. There may be someone helping you, like we said, maybe some friends or acquaintances who are bringing you some blessings or opportunities or just a lot of comfort and peace. So you may feel more aligned with the universe's plan for you and you're going to start to see that everything is happening for you, not to you. For Gemini, this lunar eclipse is affecting your 12th house. So the 12th house is the house of the subconscious. It is the house of hidden enemies, of self-sabotage and endings. So at this time, you may feel like you want to free yourself through these 12 house topics. And at the same time, you may need to leave behind something that is represented by your sixth house. And the sixth house represents your work, your health, your well-being, and your daily routine. So at this time, you may want to become free from your addictions, your vices, or your subconscious negative patterns you may need to leave behind some bad habits in your sixth house. Perhaps you have some vices that are affecting your health and it's finally time to break that, those habits. On the other hand, you may also feel like you want to free yourself by going into seclusion or going away and resting more but at the same time you need to cut yourself from perhaps a work environment or just work in general from serving other people and you may feel a bit guilty or like you can't do that but it is what is necessary for your well-being. So Saturn is challenging this eclipse and it is in your ninth house of beliefs and spiritual growth. So if you are feeling a little bit skeptical about your ability to break free, if you don't have much hope that things will turn out okay if you take this risk, this risk and take care of yourself in some way, um, Saturn is challenging that and it's asking you to work on your sense of hope and belief, to trust that everything will be okay. And at the same time, we have this eclipse being affected by Jupiter and Neptune, which are in your 10th house of career, public image, and social status, as well as father figures. So there is some help for your situation coming from this house. So perhaps 
you are going to be encouraged or enabled by someone in a higher position, perhaps a boss or some kind of a mentor figure who is encouraging you to get away from work and rest more, or perhaps some kind of a father figure is going to help you with your vices or addictions or your negative patterns and it's going to be a real blessing. On another level, you may even see some blessings on your career path, so maybe some opportunities are coming. If, for example, if this eclipse is about leaving a toxic work environment and it makes you a bit worried about what the future holds, there's no need to worry because Jupiter and Neptune are a very gentle, beneficial influence in your 10th house, so things will turn out okay, or there may be some opportunities coming to you. Then, in the second half of the month, we are going to have several transits in Sagittarius. We are going to have Sun, Venus and Mercury leaving Scorpio and stepping into a much more positive and light-hearted Sagittarius. So, in general, this is a much more positive time. It's a time to explore, to have new experiences, to take risks and learn new things. And for you, this is happening in your seventh house of partnerships. And so this may be a good time to perhaps start a new relationship or um, it could be a new beginning in your married life or with your serious partner. Or there may be an opportunity for a business partnership, especially with someone from a different country or from a different background because Sagittarius rules things and people that are a bit foreign to us. So in general, there is with the new moon in Sagittarius as well, that is happening on the 23rd. This signifies a very beneficial new start in this area. And this new start is also being helped by Neptune and Jupiter in your 10th house. So this could be a very peaceful and hopeful time. It's a gentle transition into a new beginning. And it is also because we have Jupiter turning direct at the same time you may feel like the fog has cleared, like you see where you're going, like things are just more optimistic and positive and you're more hopeful and positive about the future. You may even see some more blessings happening to you in your 10th house where Jupiter is. Or some good karma is coming back to you. So perhaps an old um, work opportunity is coming back. And just in general, you may feel more aligned with the universe's plan for you. And you are starting to see that things are happening for you, not to you. You could also receive some help or advice from a teacher or a guide or a mentor figure in your life. This could be even your father or your boss, for example, or someone in a higher position that you respect. For Cancer, this eclipse is affecting your 11th house as well as your 5th house. So 11th house is the house of friends, social connections, groups we belong to. And the fifth house is the house of fun, pleasure, entertainment. So 
At this time, you may feel a greater need to free yourself in some manner through your friends. Perhaps you will change your friend circle or change your approach to friendships or connecting with people. You may want to meet new people now, but at the same time, you may have some fears coming from your fifth house. And this could have to do with perhaps some fears around cutting ties with some people you used to have fun with, for example, especially if they were more toxic, if they were pulling you towards fun that was not good for you. So at this time you may feel a need to break free from them, to free yourself. And at the same time, this eclipse is being squared by Saturn, which is in your 8th house of personal issues and baggage of our deep psyche of secrets, of crises. So you may feel... Basically, you may reach a point where you're starting to realize that perhaps the way you have been having fun is really not good for you and it's really affecting you and it's destructive and you are going to decide that it's time to break that cycle and free yourself and perhaps reconsider who you hang out with so you are freeing yourself from toxic behavior and toxic people in your life this could also pertain to perhaps some romantic partners who are not good for you because the fifth house does rule romance and dating perhaps you are changing your patterns when it comes to dating and this eclipse, this shift, is being helped by Jupiter and Neptune, which are putting a positive aspect to this eclipse. And they may bring some mentors or spiritual guides to you, because they are in your ninth house, which has to do with our personal beliefs and spiritual growth. So there may be either some knowledge or some people who really open your eyes and help you see that your current way of being is not good for you and you may find a way to surrender yourself to higher power now, to focus on your spirituality. So at this time, you may really benefit from a spiritual practice. This could be anything, could be prayer, could be affirmations, meditation, anything spiritual, anything that helps you break free and trust that everything is going to be okay. In the second half of the month, we have several transits in Sagittarius. So we're going to have the Sun, Venus and Mercury stepping into Sagittarius and this is affecting your sixth house of health, also work, daily routine and employees if you have them or your work environment. So you are going to feel much more positive and optimistic in this area of your life, much more open to trying things, more willing to explore, to have new experiences, to take risks and to learn new things. With Mercury, there is some intellectual curiosity and with Venus, we are going to have a lot of enjoyment as well. 
So you are really, if this is health related and you are cutting out some people who have been affecting you in this sense, you may really feel freed and much more positive and much happier. You could start even a new uh, health regimen that you really enjoy. This could have to do with some spiritual practices as well because it's in Sagittarius. So you may want to try meditation or yoga or anything else more spiritual. It's really going to help you at this time. We also have the new moon at the first degree of Sagittarius affecting this house. So this new start is going to be very beneficial. And it is also being helped by Neptune and Jupiter. So those uh, spiritual beliefs or mentors or guides that you come across could be really the ones that help guide you and help you transition into a new beginning after the turbulence of the eclipse. On the same day as the new moon, we also have Jupiter turning direct at 28 degrees Pisces. And Jupiter has been retrograde since the end of July. So you may have been feeling more confused, lost or hopeless. And especially for you, this is happening in your ninth house of beliefs. So you may have really been feeling these effects. And finally, this fog is clearing and your, your sense of belief in the universe is being restored. You are going to feel more hopeful and positive. And you could also see some blessings or some good karma come back to you. In general, this is a time of peace and, and having a deep trust in the universe. You may feel more aligned with the universe and you trust its plan for you and you are starting to see that everything is happening for you, not to you. For Leo, this lunar eclipse is affecting your 10th house of career, achievements, and reputation, and also your 4th house of home, family, and roots. So at this time, you may feel like you want to become more free and independent when it comes to your career path, your future ambitions, and your general life direction. But this is in opposition to your home or your family. So perhaps your family members disagree with your plans for the future. And you may feel like you need to choose between the two, like you may need to cut ties with family members or family environment or even your homeland in general, like you need to leave the past behind in order to move to the future. And we also have Saturn squaring this eclipse from the seventh house. And the Saturn is challenging your fears when it comes to partnerships. So perhaps you are, this could have to do with an actual partner and perhaps your family having some objections and you may need to, you may feel like you need to choose between the two. This could also have to do with breaking free from a partnership and your family having an issue with that. This could also pertain to business partnerships, especially if you are, if you are making some sort of a change in your career, 
perhaps it's about business partnerships that you have had and a sense of um, safety and security they have provided and it's time to break free. So there may be some pressure on you to be more, some internal pressure to be more independent and to not be connected with other people. But we also have Jupiter and Neptune putting nice aspects to this eclipse and helping you. And this is coming from your eighth house, which is the house of secrets, of other people's resources. It's the house of crises. It's the house of our psychological issues. So they are helping you through this stressful time. And they may even bring some blessings or financial help from other people. Or just in general, you may feel more at peace during this turbulent time. You may feel like, despite the fact that things are very stressful, you are at peace with this choice or this choice is leading you towards more peace so it is positive then in the second half of the month we are going to have several planets stepping into Sagittarius which is affecting your fifth house of fun entertainment creativity and romance and self-expression so this is going to be a much lighter time you are going to feel more positive, more open, more willing to explore, especially when it comes to creativity, to have new experiences, to take risks, to learn new things. There is a sense of intellectual curiosity here and also more enjoyment because we have Venus stepping into the fifth house. This could also be a time when you decide to date around, to meet new people, to explore new hobbies. And um, just in general, it's a much more positive time. If you have children, you may do more things with them and really enjoy their company. Then we're gonna have the new moon at the first degree of Sagittarius, which is also affecting this house. And this is bringing a very beneficial new start in this area. And this new start is also being helped by Neptune and Jupiter from the 8th house. So whatever is going on, you are going to feel much more peaceful and hopeful as well as at this time. It's a much more gentle time. You are much more at peace with yourself and also Jupiter is turning direct on the same day of the new moon. So if you have been feeling confused or lost or a little hopeless, your sense of belief in the universe is going to be restored now. You're going to feel more hopeful, more positive and optimistic. And you could also see some blessings and some good karma come back to you, especially in that eighth house. So maybe other people are going to give you some resources or help you with some opportunities. In general, you may feel more aligned with the universe's plan for you. And you're going to start to see that things are happening for you, not to you. For Virgo, this lunar eclipse is affecting your ninth house of higher education, spiritual beliefs, and long journeys, and also your third house of your mind and your close surroundings. So at this time, you may feel the need to 
become more free by establishing some new personal beliefs or by going to a foreign place. But at the same time, this means that you need to cut ties with something in the third house, meaning you may you may stop searching and questioning things. You may cut ties with your close surroundings and the people in it, with your neighbors, siblings, the people you interact with on a daily basis. And um, so you may um, feel like you're you're um, f working on your personal beliefs or on your wisdom you're searching for that higher truth at this time and it needs to be something that is your own that you establish independently from others saturn is also challenging this eclipse from your sixth house of work and so you could feel challenged by the people in your everyday life or the people in your work environment you may feel like you want to break away from them so perhaps there is some uh, toxic behavior at work or in your daily life that you want to cut away from and um, you are trying to liberate yourself from what is familiar to you you want to find peace in exploration in the unknown and this eclipse is also being supported by Jupiter and Neptune, which are in your seventh house of partnerships. So you could be very supported in this change by your partner or some other people who are helping you and supporting you. So in general, it's, um, it's not such a drastic transition you just are looking for something new something fresh and different something that is taking you away from what you have known so far and what feels perhaps a little bit stagnant in the second half of the month we are gonna have several planets stepping into Sagittarius and this is going to affect your fourth house of home and family and your sense of peace and inner security as well so you are going to feel much more positive open much more willing to explore to have new experiences to take risks to learn new things there is some intellectual curiosity here with Mercury in Sagittarius as well as more enjoyment with Venus in Sagittarius. So because this is happening in your uh, fourth house of home and family, you could actually travel to a foreign country and feel really at home there, like you found your true home. You could also connect more with your family. Perhaps you will take a trip somewhere because Sagittarius rules foreign places. Or you could just have more spiritual or philosophical conversations with them. And you may learn something through them. But in general, you're going to feel much more optimistic and positive and much more hopeful. The new moon is happening at Sagittarius at the first degree. And this is going to bring a beneficial new start in this area of your life. 
And this new start is also being helped by Neptune and Jupiter coming from your seventh house. So perhaps you are, you are um, moving somewhere with your partner and it's bringing you much more peace. Perhaps you're leaving behind the things you have known, the things that have felt a little bit stagnant and you are finding a place you can call home. So in general, this is a very peaceful and hopeful time for you. We also have Jupiter turning direct at 28 degrees Pisces. And it has been retrograde since the end of July. So if you have been feeling a little lost or confused or hopeless, especially when it comes to your partnerships, or perhaps if your partner has been feeling like that, um, this is going to shift now. There's going to be a greater sense of hope and optimism in your relationship. You may feel more hopeful more positive and there may even be some blessings or some good karma coming back in this house you are gonna feel a deeper sense of peace and trust in the universe especially since sagittarius is in your fourth house of inner security and you may feel more aligned with the universe's plan for you and you are starting to see that everything is happening for you, not to you. For Libra, this eclipse is affecting your eighth house of shared resources and intimacy, as well as your second house of personal finances and self-esteem and values. So at this time, you may feel like you want to become more free by sharing your resources with others. But at the same time, you may have some fears around losing your personal finances or the control of your personal finances. And we also have Saturn challenging this eclipse from the fifth house so you may feel like it's time to perhaps join resources with another person but you have a sense of fear and uncertainty especially because saturn is in the fifth house which also rules speculation so you may feel like you may feel a little bit afraid to um, trust your money to other people and you're not sure if it's a good investment. There's some risk involved and it's making you a little uncomfortable or uncertain. But we do have Jupiter and Neptune helping this eclipse and they are in your sixth house of your daily life and work so perhaps you will receive some support from your work or work environment or this is also the sixth house also rules your health and the way you take care of your health and these two planets are quite spiritual so if you have any kind of uncertainty if you are feeling uneasy perhaps it would really help you to get into some spiritual practice and that's really gonna help you ease your mind then in the second half of the month we are gonna have several transits in Sagittarius and this is going to bring a lot of positivity and openness and a willingness to explore in your third house, which rules your mind, your ideas, also short trips. So you may, you may become more positive and optimistic after the initial trepidation. 
you could start to feel more open, more willing to explore, to take risks, to learn new things, especially if this has to do with finances, perhaps you're going to explore this topic more intellectually. There is a sense of intellectual curiosity because we have Mercury involved and also more enjoyment because we have Venus. So in general, this is bringing a positive time. And with the new moon at the first degree of Sagittarius, it's going to bring a beneficial new start in this area. So you may literally change your mindset and become more open, hopeful and willing to experiment. And uh, this new moon is also being helped by Neptune and Jupiter, which are again in your sixth house. So something in your daily life or someone in your daily life could really be helping you get through this transition and making you feel at peace and more hopeful. So it is quite a gentle transition. With these planets in the third house, you may actually take a short trip somewhere just for a, a few days. And since it is happening in Sagittarius, it could be you could be going to a faraway place for a short trip. So if you have the opportunity, you should definitely go. It's going to be a really fun trip. Then, um, along with this new moon, we also have Jupiter turning direct at 28 degrees Pisces, which is bringing an end of confusion or feeling lost or hopeless in your sixth house. So, if you have been dealing with some uncertainty in your daily life, at work or perhaps even with your health these fears are gonna be um, lessened and you're gonna feel much calmer you could also see some blessings in this house and some good karma could come back to you overall you're gonna feel a deeper sense of peace you're gonna trust the universe more and you may even feel more aligned with the universe's plan for you. And you're starting to see that things are happening for you, not to you. For Scorpio, this lunar eclipse is affecting your seventh house of partnerships and marriage, as well as your first house of the self. So at this time, you may become more open with people or with your partner. You may be more willing to find a sense of independence or freedom through other people, through a particular partnership. But at the same time, this will require you to let go of your old ways of living life, the way you've been looking at things or approaching things in general. And so you may also need to let go of control because we have Scorpio. So at this time, you may get involved with someone who is perhaps more spiritual, more gentle, more optimistic. And this connection could feel very spiritual and beneficial. And it could make you more open to getting involved with someone in a more serious way, because the seventh house rules serious relationships. So this connection could bring you a lot of peace and it, it could really encourage you to open yourself up to the possibility of a serious relationship if that is something you have been struggling with. Mm, there 
could also be something to do with children, perhaps. So perhaps you get involved with someone and there is a pregnancy, but this connection is very positive. And so this, this event kind of encourages you to, to uh, commit yourself more to someone, for example. So overall, it's, it's positive. Also, we have several transits in Sagittarius in the second half of the month. And this is going to be a very positive time for you. This is affecting your second house of values, self-esteem, and personal income. So there could be some expansion here. You could feel more positive, more open, more willing to explore, to have new experiences, to take risks and learn new things when it comes to this area. You may feel more intellectually curious as well because we have Mercury and you're going to enjoy this house much more because we have Venus. So perhaps there is some financial benefits coming to you or you could buy yourself something nice. Just watch out because Sagittarius is also quite excessive. So don't overspend on the things you enjoy. But in general, um, you should feel the beneficial effects here. And then we have the new moon at Sagittarius, at the first degree of Sagittarius. And this is bringing a very beneficial new start in this area of your life. And it is also being helped by Neptune and Jupiter in your fifth house. So it's a very peaceful and hopeful time as well. Um, whatever is going on in that fifth house, if it's a new partner or a child or even... This could even have to do with some speculative business that pays off because we have this Sagittarius in the second house. So overall, a great time. We also have Jupiter turning direct at 28 degrees of Pisces. And this is also in your fifth house. So this is bringing an end to confusion or if you have been feeling lost or hopeless when it comes to your fifth house themes of perhaps having children, perhaps you didn't think you would have children and then unexpectedly you do, or perhaps your, your uh, thoughts around romantic relationships, around fun and creativity, if you have been feeling a little hopeless here, your sense of belief is going to be restored. You may feel more hopeful, more positive. There may be more opportunities for these things. And you could even see some blessings and some good karma come back to you. So overall, it's a time when you're going to feel a deep sense of peace. You're going to have more trust in the universe. And you're going to feel more, more aligned with the universe's plan for you. And you're going to start to see that everything is happening for you, not to you. For Sagittarius, the lunar eclipse is affecting your sixth house of daily routine, work and health. And also your twelfth house of the subconscious, hidden enemies and self-reflection. So at this time, you may feel like you want to be more free in your daily life. You may want to change your routine or start a new health regimen. But at the same time, this requires you to cut out some subconscious patterns or vices or addictive habits. So this is all about your health and well-being and 
focusing on improving yourself. Saturn is also challenging this eclipse from the third house of the mind. So you may be feeling like you are stuck in a mental prison and this is a time when you're being, being challenged to liberate yourself from it, from skepticism, from not believing that you are capable of this change, for example. You also have some help in the form of Jupiter and Neptune, which are in your fourth house of home and family. So you could receive a lot of support from your family. And just in general, this transition could be leading you to feeling more peaceful and serene within yourself because the fourth house also rules our sense of inner peace. In the second half of the month, we are going to have several transits in Sagittarius and this is going to affect your first house of the self and your general life path and the way you go about things. So this is a time when you're going to feel more positive, more open, more willing to explore and try new things, more willing to take risks and learn more. You may become more intellectually curious as well because we have Mercury involved and you're really going to enjoy yourself more because we also have Venus. With Venus in the first house, you may even think about a physical transformation. Perhaps you're going to do a makeover or start working on your body, for example. We also have the new moon at the first degree of Sagittarius. This new moon is also being supported by Jupiter and Neptune in your fourth house. So at this time, you may be very supported in this new chapter of your life by your family and just in general you're gonna feel a sense of peace and hope. Also Jupiter is turning direct in your fourth house so if there has been some confusion if you have felt lost or hopeless as it relates to your home or your family life or just your inner sense of peace and security this is going to change now your belief in the universe is going to be restored you're going to feel more hopeful and positive and there may even be some blessings and some good karma coming back to you in this fourth house so you're going to feel a deep sense of peace and you're going to have more trust in the universe. You are going to feel more aligned with the universe's plan for you. And you're going to start to see that things are happening for you, not to you. For Capricorn, the lunar eclipse is affecting your fifth house of creativity, fun, and romance, and also your 11th house of friendships, social circles, and groups you belong to. So at this time, you may feel like you want to seek more freedom by expressing yourself in a more authentic way. This could also have something to do with your romantic relationships or the way you approach romantic relationships. Or you could be more willing to try new things as it relates to fun hobbies and entertainment and creativity. But at the same time, you may need to cut out something in your 11th house or change something in your 11th house and this is the house of friends and your social circle so perhaps you are uneasy because you are not sure if 
your social circle or other people in general are going to approve of the way you want to express yourself or your romantic choices, the way you go about romantic relationships or who you want to be with. At the same time, there is also a square to this eclipse coming from your second house by Saturn, and Saturn rules your values. So perhaps you are feeling a little bit uneasy with making this choice, but Saturn is a karmic planet and it's asking you to heal this karmic blockage you have when it comes to your values. So perhaps you need to stop caring about what other people think and be authentically yourself. This could also have something to do with your finances, especially if other people are connected with your finances or they are maybe benefiting from you. You may need to um, change that and change the way you, you go about things. Also, in the second half of the month, we are going to have several transits in Sagittarius and this is affecting your 12th house of the subconscious, solitude and self-reflection. So with Sagittarius there, you may feel like you want to retreat more. You may become more spiritual even because the 12th house is connected to our spirituality and Sagittarius is a spiritual sign. So you may start new spiritual practices at this time. You may really benefit from them. They may bring you a lot of peace. And just in general, you may need to perhaps work on some subconscious patterns especially if you have been overdoing some vices, for example, because Sagittarius does tend to exaggerate and the 12th house is connected to our vices, so perhaps something needs to be changed there. Um, in general, you could also take a trip somewhere because both Sagittarius and the 12th house have to do with journeys, so this is a good time to go on a retreat, to take a holiday and rest, to experience something new, to go to a new place you know nothing about, for example. There is also going to be more intellectual curiosity about other cultures and more enjoyment of this 12 house topics as well. So long trips to foreign places or spirituality may become really interesting and enjoyable now. We also have a new moon at the first degree of Sagittarius and this is bringing a very beneficial new start in this area and this new start is also being helped by Neptune and Jupiter so this could be a very peaceful and hopeful time as well you may just as far as your mind goes you may feel more at peace you may be more spiritually minded and more interested in spiritual topics in learning about them in talking about them and just in general you're going to feel more optimistic you may also want to explore your environment more or take a short trip somewhere um, and in general right jupiter is also turning direct in pisces in your third house so this could bring an end of confusion if you have been struggling a lot with your mind when it comes to this big shift. Uh, this is going to bring an end of confusion, of feeling lost or hopeless. 
your sense of belief and optimism is going to be restored. And just in general, you're going to be more willing to explore things, learn things, try new things. There may even be some blessings or some good karma coming back to you in this area of your life. And in general, you're going to feel a deep sense of peace. You're going to trust the universe more. You may feel more aligned with the universe's plan for you. And you're going to start to see that everything is happening for you, not to you. For Aquarius, the lunar eclipse is affecting your fourth house of home and family and also your 10th house of career and life ambitions. So at this time, you may feel like you want to feel more free by being around family, by focusing on your home, but at the same time, you may need to cut some ties when it comes to your career or perhaps a father figure. This could be a father or a boss or someone you look up to. And it may feel a little uncertain. We also have Saturn squaring this eclipse from your first house of self. So this Saturn is challenging your fears around personal independence and making your own choices in life. Perhaps you have been listening to others up till now and it's time to break free and seek more personal freedom. This eclipse in the fourth house could also bring a sense of liberation on the inside because the fourth house rules our sense of inner peace and security and so this is a time when you're becoming more more yourself and there could also be some help coming to you from Jupiter and Neptune which are in your second house so the second house rules your self-esteem, your values, as well as your finances. So there could be something positive or beneficial com coming up in this house. You may just in general feel more at peace with, your, with yourself, with your choices. You are starting to value peace more. So making that decision to, to follow yourself and your choices could be easier. In the second half of the month, we are going to have several transits through Sagittarius. And this is going to be affecting your 11th house of friendships, social circles and groups we belong to. But this is also the house of our hopes and our dreams. So at this time, you may feel more positive, optimistic, more open when it comes to this area of your life. You may find new friends. You may spend more time with your friends. You may go on adventures and try new things or learn something together. New experiences as well. So there is going to be more intellectual curiosity and more enjoyment as well with Mercury and Venus stepping into the 11th house. So also we have the new moon at the first degree of Sagittarius and this is bringing a very beneficial new start that is also being helped by Neptune and Jupiter. So this could be a time when you feel very much at peace with your choices and where you want to go in the future, your vision for the future, your hopes and dreams that you have. And you may really feel much more aligned. Also, Jupiter is turning direct in your second house. So if you have been feeling 
confused, lost, or hopeless when it comes to the second house topics like values, self-esteem, or even uh, finances, this is going to end and you may also see some blessings and some good karma come back to you in this area of your life. And just in general, you're going to feel a deeper sense of peace. You're going to trust yourself more. You're going to trust the universe more. And you're going to feel more aligned with the universe. And you're also going to see that things are happening for you, not to you. For Pisces, the lunar eclipse is affecting your third house of the mind, the intellect, learning, as well as your close surroundings, and also your ninth house of education, spiritual beliefs, and long journeys. So at this time, you may feel like you want to be more free in your daily life or by interacting with your close environment. You could also feel a greater need for freedom when it comes to your thinking, your ideas. But at the same time, this means that you need to cut some ties with either a belief system or perhaps a study path that you have been on that doesn't resonate with you anymore, or even some kind of a foreign country or a person from a foreign country or some kind of a mentor, a professor, a teacher that you no longer align with. This is a time when you need to explore more, try things and do things practically. So not learning through books, but learning by doing essentially. You need to expand your skills and your practical knowledge. At the same time, Saturn is challenging this eclipse and this is happening in your, in your 12th house, which rules endings actually. So you may be feeling a little bit worried about ending something, ending your connection in this ninth house. And this is actually necessary because Saturn is karmic and it's trying to get you to cut some karmic patterns that are limiting you and holding you back. And at the same time, we have Jupiter and Neptune helping this transition because they are also in your first house of self, of your life path, of new beginnings. And this is bringing a very gentle influence so you're going to feel more peaceful, more serene, more spiritual. And so this, this uh, transition is going to be positive overall. In the second half of the month, we are going to have several planets stepping into Sagittarius. And this is going to affect your 10th house of career and achievements and life ambitions so at this time you may feel some very positive effects in this house you may feel more positive more open more willing to explore and more willing to try new things to take risks to learn more you may be more intellectually curious and also you may enjoy this area of your life much more with the new moon at the first degree of Sagittarius, this is bringing a beneficial new start in this area that is also being helped by Neptune and Jupiter in your first house. So you could feel um, very peaceful and hopeful for the future at this time as well. Jupiter is also turning direct in your first house so this is going to bring an end of confusion or if you have been feeling lost or hopeless your sense of belief in the universe is being restored 
you may feel more hopeful and positive about your life and how you go about your life. And you could also see some blessings and some good karma come back to you. So this is bringing you a deep sense of peace and more trust in the universe. You're going to feel more aligned with the universe's plan for you. And you're going to see that everything is happening for you, not to you. So that's the forecast for the month of November for all 12 signs. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a great month and I hope you will join me in my next video. Bye!